Welcome back everyone. Over the past 20 videos, we had a look at the data fetching aspect of React Query. Now it's time to focus on the data posting aspect. That is, sending data from your application to any backend. If you've worked on web applications for a while, you know that posting data like a new to-do item or a new name or submitting a form are all pretty common. React Query does cater to those scenarios, but it goes the extra mile to make things simpler for you. And that is what we will focus on. In this video, we will learn how to perform a basic post request. And in the upcoming videos, we will see what features React Query provides to make our life easier. Now, similar to the previous videos, I have already set up some code beforehand. Let me walk you through the changes I've done. In our Q Superheroes page, where we used to display the list of heroes, I have now added two inputs and a button. So we are now giving the user the ability to add a new superhero into the list. For that, in rqsuperheroes.page.js, at the top, I have imported useState and created two state variables to track the hero name and their alter ego. We also have the corresponding setter functions. In the JSX, we have two inputs whose values are name, alter ego, and on change, we update the respective state variables. I've also added a button called add hero, on click of which I call a function called handle add hero click. At the moment, I'm just logging the values to the console. So if we were to head back to the browser, fill in the flash and Barry Allen, click on add hero. In the console, we should see the two values. Now all of this is simple React code, which is why I've done it beforehand to save us some time. What we now have to do is call an API that accepts hero name and alter ego and saves that data into db.json. Let's learn how. The first thing you have to know is that JSON server, apart from supporting get requests, also supports post requests. So you can make a post request with some data and it will be written to the file. We don't have to configure anything. With that in mind, let's get back to the React Query bit. In React Query, unlike queries, mutations are what we use to create, update, or delete data. And for this purpose, similar to use query, the library provides a use mutation hook. We could add the code right here in the component, but since we have a custom hook created, Let's head over to that file and add the code. Now you can see here, we defined a custom hook, which returns use query. We do something similar for use mutation as well. At the top, import use query and use mutation from React Query. Next, we define the custom hook. Export const use add superhero data and this is an arrow function. From within the function, we call and return the use mutation hook. Use mutation, unlike use query, doesn't necessarily need a key. So the first argument is the function which will post data to the backend. Let's call this function add superhero. So similar to the fetcher function we had written for use query, we need to define a mutation function. Const add superhero. And this is an arrow function again. The function is going to accept 
the hero details that we pass in from our component. Within the function, we make an Axios post request and return the result. So return axios.post. The first argument is the URL for the API endpoint. This remains the same. HTTP localhost port 4000 slash superheroes. We also specify hero is the data for this request. So that is the second argument. If we head to db.json, we want the hero object to be added to the superheroes array. And this request will accomplish that. All right, we have now defined the custom use mutation hook. The question now is how do we call this hook and post data from the component? Well, for that, begin by importing and invoking the custom hook in our queue superheroes.page.js. So use add superhero data and import it at the top. We call this hook without any parameters. Similar to use query, use mutation does return a few values which we can destructure. For our example, we just need one value which is called mutate. This is the function we have to call to make the post request. So inside handle add hero click, const hero is equal to an object with name and alter ego as properties. And then we call mutate passing in the hero object. Of course, if you have multiple mutations, you can alias the mutate function. So mutate colon add hero and within the click handler, add hero passing in the hero object. And that should do it. Let's save all the files and test this out in the browser. Let's fill in the flash and Barry Allen and click add hero. If we now click on fetch heroes, we should see the flash being displayed. I can click and view the hero details as well. Our mutation is working as expected. If I head to db.json, you can see the fourth object now in the superheroes array. To summarize, import use mutation and call it passing in the mutation function. The mutation function automatically receives any argument you pass when you invoke the mutate function in the component. In our case, it is hero. Also, on a side note, I've destructured only mutate function, but use mutation also returns is loading, which you can use to show a loading indicator, is error, and error to show any possible error, and a few other values. As a homework, I want you to make use of these three values in the component. You might have to alias them since we already have the same properties from use query as well. Give it a try and let me know in the comment section if you were able to get it working. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.